Welcome to season one. Episode 22. <laughs> 22. That is the age when I started having children. Ugh. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your kids are great. My kids are awesome. They are. Yeah. They're, they're, they're kick ass. They're pretty dope. Yep. Do kids even use that word anymore? Dope? Oh, it's sick. No. Uh, dope AF. I know what that means. Mm-hmm. I know. But your son keeps saying sick. Yeah. You're back in my day, that meant that you had tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> I've got shingles. Now apparently that's a good thing. Um, uh, uh, kids today. Kids these days. Kids these days. I want to mention that I am a hundred dollars richer today. Yes, you are a hundred dollars richer because you won the bet. I won the bet. Yeah. So it was no Olympics. Yes. We, uh, the, the no side, um, I hate saying sides cause it's, it's not black no, and white, but it was actually yes, there. It's, but it's either yes or no. It's on or off. Or I meant the whole thing um. wasn't black or white, but, um, the no side won with 56.4% or something yeah. like that. 56 point something. Yeah. Um, and 304,000 people came out to vote, which is apparently 40% of the eligible voters of Calgary, which surprised a, me quite a bit. Right, but and I, not a bad number? No, because really? we're about, what, 1.3 million-ish? Yeah. 1.2, 1.3. So I thought that there would be more than 500,000 eligible voters, but huh. seems weird to me. But anyways... I don't know. Children. Lots of kids. Ugh. Again. <laughs> Stop procreating people. Come on. <laughs> procreating comma people. Really? Or procreating people. It's still the same. Quit technically. making people. It's technically the same <laughs> thing with or without the comma. <laughs> Is it? I don't think it changes. Well, it changes, but it still means the same Quit thing. Quit making people. People. We're off to a rough start. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> we, we are, but okay. So, uh, so we had a bet and I was, I was on the yes camp Yep. because I'm a romantic and I remember the 88 Olympics and it was, I wanted it to, I wanted to feel that feeling again. But it was a different time, sir. Yes. Yes, it was. And you're on the no side. Yep. Because uh, you're contrary. Yes. That's the only reason <laughs> just to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> and be on the winning side. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, so we the 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 numbers came in really really quickly, uh, probably because well I'm not sure because I we got so, so, results really quickly right. But so uh, I don't, I don't know whether other Calgarians had this same experience. But when I fed my ballot into that machine, I'm pretty sure all I heard was. <laughs> That's why the no side won, because every fourth ballot, it was just a shredder. They banskied that shit. Man, it was crazy. I'm, like, it literally looked like you're feeding it into a shredder. A shredder or or a uh, one of the printers I have at work, like this little mm-hmm. tray that you Where just put it, it in. It's very weird. Yeah. It was it was very odd. Um, but but uh, anyway, we, nonetheless. We did our civic duty. We voted. And I won. Yeah. And, $100. Uh, we bet $100. And if I won, um, you're going to give me $100, which I then would have given to Nenshi. Oh, I thought you were going to get $100 and give another $100, which yeah. is, I guess, the same yeah. $100. But after Nenshi dropped the bomb of raising taxes on small businesses the day after the vote, yes. I'm a little less inclined to give him $100 ever. Yeah, I'm, uh, you had your chance, Nenshi. So I find it very suspect that Calgary would release their budget the day after the plebiscite. And I don't recall if that was always a thing. Like yeah. if he was always like, yeah, and the budget comes the next day and people were like, what? But they are raising the taxes anyway. Mm. And I'm happy to pay extra taxes for, you know, four more police stations, sure, 200 yeah. more put police some, officers, yeah, put some more cops on the street. better roads, um, yeah. snow removal, uh, ambulance, fire, station. fire stations, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Great. Whatever. Yeah. Bus drivers. But the more yeah, transit. transit. Yeah. Cool. Mm. But infrastructure. Go ahead. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we'll shorten that. No, or we won't. I, I don't know. I don't think I will. 
I think you can imagine, dear listeners, the daggers that were coming across the microphone from Jen. I love you, but I will murder you. Um, small businesses, uh, 25 up maximum 25% raise in their taxes over the next four years. That's insane. And we discussed last week with Dan that downtown is 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 dying yeah and uh we had friends who who have lost their small businesses their restaurants and whatnot because they couldn't afford the taxes yeah what the hell yeah i know it, it's it's really ridiculous it's the wrong way and again i'm no economist <laughs> <laughs> nobody is actually <laughs> but there's got to be a better way than, than but maybe that is just one of those Things that, you know, um, news puts out there to inflame the masses so that people freak the fuck out. Well, they should freak the fuck out, though, because we know a lot of people who own their own companies, you included. Oh, yeah. And there's no way they'd be able to afford it. I mean, yay, uh, minimum wage went up, but that on top of the taxes, on top of the other taxes and the property taxes, and I mean... I, and this is one of the reasons why I said no to the Olympics was I'm happy to pay taxes for new more police officers, but I'm not, I don't want to raise taxes for a giant intergalactic kegger sports party in eight years. It's, it's not really, it's not quite the time. Yeah. If they asked us again in another three years, I, I might be like, yeah, hell yeah. Like that'll be fun. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and, and I, and I don't disagree, especially on the heels of that announcement with, you know, we're in trouble because, you know, and you rightly put uh, like out there in the on the web that it's a little suspect. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird mm -hmm. the day after. Like that's disingenuous, actually, is what it feels like, <clears throat> you know, and I get that if they put the budget ahead of the vote, it would have been a resounding no. Oh, yeah. At least this way, it was a here's all the facts that we let you see. Make your make your choice. Yeah, city council but, but right the, now. But it's the let you see part that's infuriating to me. Yeah, yeah. And I and I understand uh, if people are like, oh, the Olympics weren't even a part of it. Well, they might have had a separate one for the Olympics. <laughs> or they might have been like, this is what we're doing for the city. We raise taxes every year or every four years. You should have known this was coming. Yeah. Plus, we're going to do another extra 0.5% for X, Y, and Z Olympic but stadium shit. But it feels wrong. It does. It oh, I, I, <laughs> I totally agree with you. And yeah. I usually, like, I try to be the devil's advocate yeah. with with mostly everything, which is why I could never be a lawyer, because I'd be like, oh, oh no, you'd be a point. perfect lawyer. No, I would, everyone would either <laughs> get away. He needed killing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. He did. <laughs> it's obvious. And then the guy I'm trying to defend would be like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> This, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I would just get disbarred really, really quickly. Yeah. But I, I don't. It's shifty, shady. Yeah. No, I know because it's not like uh. they woke up that the next morning and they're like, "Oh, look, a brand new budget." No, <laughs> let's yeah. announce it. Yeah. They must have known. They had to have known yeah. ahead of time what it looked like and what was coming. And maybe they were hoping that they could hide this budget in the Olympic budget and nobody would notice. They'd be like, oh, it's just the Olympic stuff we have to pay for. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Shifty, shifty, yeah, shifty. Not impressed. What I didn't like hearing actually was the Nenshi auto dialers. I didn't get one of those. I didn't get one either, but I did hear from several people who got. Uh, the the day before or the night of yeah uh, auto dialing which i think is fucking horribly wrong also shady yeah I, I think that's super shady like that's some weird pressure tactics came in at the end and i'm like huh. so it's no longer just a pure and i get it from a business perspective even from an arts perspective i would love to have seen the games here still would right like that's the in my, in my you know romantic future that would be great but to use those tactics, I just, I don't know. And it's, I apparently think it's legal. I didn't think it would, well, I guess it, yeah. I, uh. Yeah, I was right. No had no budget. It was like no budget, no. Yeah. Right? Like th th they had no budget to fight against the yes. And the yes had all the budget in the world. And that, that to me is also like in retrospect, fucking wrong. It's weird. Yeah. Super weird. And they made some, like, the no side made posters and they had a little website and stuff. And it was, it was considering they had no budget. It was, like, gra grassroots. It was great. Yeah, yeah. But it was great. Um, but the yes side had, um, all these sports people and, and sports channels and all, all, 
athletes and post they flew Olympic in Eddie athletes. the Eagle. What they had Eddie the Eagle here? They had city council or the mayor putting out robocalls with his voice going, "Hi, I'm Nenchi. Please vote yes." La la la. And and they had like I saw tons of sponsored posts on Facebook and stuff. I, I wonder if that worked against them in the end. Like from a from a marketing and branding perspective, I I tend to think like when I was hearing that in the in the day leading up to the vote uh-huh. and it was like that big pressure. I think as soon as you start feeling that pressure, you start feeling that something's wrong. Yeah, it, it right? turns you off. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So I, take note, City of Calgary. Yeah, I I stayed out of a lot of, there was a lot of infighting. It actually brought out a lot of bad with some weird of shit. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of it, some things that turned me off was, um, and I heard this happened on the no side as well, but I didn't see it. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Most of the trolls and the assholes that came out to call people names and tell them that they were horrible people yeah. were the yes side. Yeah. Um, I've got I no- checked. I, I told one or two people like you you vote yes. Sure. I don't care. But you know what? You don't have to call Bob here a name because he would rather his taxes go to something else. Don't call him an asshole. Don't call him an idiot. Don't call him a. You know what it kind of reminds me of? So I was walking down Gladstone, which is that weird little street in Kensington yeah. that goes towards 10th Street. <clears throat> and so it's a it's a one lane road, really, because there's parking on us. You know, it's two cars just can't go by. At you once. can't go by at once. So there's this, you know, um, I don't know. It was like this white Audi. And right behind it was this gray fucking Audi SUV right on its ass yeah. and like revving its engine. And so this white car would come to a stop and this one would be like right on its ass and then it would leave and it would try to like dodge around it what it's like being super aggressive like this you can't what like mad bro is all i could think <laughs> the the road is every hundred meters or every 12 meters there's a stop, <laughs> a stop sign. sign there's nowhere you can go <laughs> yeah it's, but this person was just trying to you know basically bully this other car either out of the way or whatever and it was so aggressive and so dangerous and that's what so this whole thing, infighting, yes, no, no, yes, like all that stuff, that's what it reminds me of. Is like that guy in Ugh. traffic that's just being that douche. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's On both sides. And because uh, I don't know which side was more or less, it doesn't really matter to me. I just think that we're better than that and let's move on. Oh, we? for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's move on to talking about my $100 that I won Yeah, because you lost. Yeah. You should not vote against me ever. <laughs> Or, shouldn't oh yeah you're right yeah yeah although so so a friend of ours liam he was uh very <laughs> upset that the only thing we voted or the only thing that we uh we, we bet. bet with is money usually our bets are pretty fun uh, yeah and he's got a great podcast by the way just a little plug for him the story not forgotten we were on it yep we yep. sure were episode 20 blah, 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 something i don't remember yeah we should probably nah yeah <laughs> it's in we'll there put it up in links <gasps> what yes yeah that's anyway, what we'll do. Yeah, so he was like, "Really, money? That's it?" Well, it's too cold to have you streak out in the Kensington Road, so I thought I'd be nice, and it was it was spur of the moment. Yeah. Well, and I th- I think it's legit. You know, put your money where your mouth is, and yeah. and honestly, it's easier for me to give you a hundred dollars, which I did, by the way. Yeah, in a very unceremonious debit transfer, e transfer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's easier than the commercial that I'm still trying to sort out for you this month. Yeah. You know, if if I lost and gave you the $100, I would have said on this podcast to use this towards your commercial for me because now you have a $100 budget. But oh. but again, you lost. So, yeah, that's yeah. true. Must get tiring for you. It's hard. I w- won't lie. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, so that happened in Calgary recently. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is going on in the world? Uh, there's a lot of shitty stuff let's, going on. Let's avoid the shitty stuff. I think the Olympic stuff we started off with it was kind of heavy. Was it heavy? I think so. Games and fun and running around with Ooh. like lit torches. <gasps> the big blue ring. That was like the saddest <laughs> post I ever saw. <laughs> So there's there's a there's some oh like controversial God. artwork in Calgary on the side of a highway. It's just a giant blue ring. Literally, that's all it is. It's like five stories tall. It has a light. It has a top. light at the top that makes me think of the tick. Yeah, it does look like the tick. Yeah. Um, but some people believe it's a portal to another universe. It could be. It's like 
Stargate. Yeah. But um, anyways, I just wanted to tell people what this was. Yeah, yeah. You can look it up. Big blue ring, we, giant li- blue ring. Or look in the links. Yes. Yeah, because we will link the big blue ring. And he was just like, thanks a lot, Calgary. <laughs> now I'm going to be alone forever. I could have gotten all the other colors to hang out with me, but no. <laughs> I love the big blue ring. It's a terrible art piece. I think, you know what? I think that if it was downtown, mm-hmm. it would be neat. It's a weird thing. It is a weird thing. I mean, yeah. it is just a big fucking blue ring. But. The fact that it stays vertical, I think, is the like it, it gives me anxiety every time I'm near it, to be honest. Cause really? I, yeah. Because I, it's, I it's feel, not going to roll away? Not roll away. I think it's just going to flop. Like, I think when the world ends, it that's going to be the last thing standing <laughs> is that ring. <laughs> it's like a nouveau ring. Oh. oh. Well. I, sorry about that. Yeah. Thanks. We, uh, we have some weird art in Calgary. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of it's fantastic. I mean, art is all subjective, right? Of course. Uh, we were talking about the um, finger trap bridge. Yeah. Recently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the fact that we spent so much money on that. Mm-hmm. And then the, the panels, apparently, the um, they're not glass. I, I mean, they're like a plexiglass. Right, or but s- when they break, suddenly, like, if they break, which is weird, you know, because it, you'd, it'd take a lot of force to break one. Vandals, but, maybe? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, somebody had broken at least one or two. Yeah. It cost a fuck ton of money to yeah. replace it, and time as well. And like, who would have thought? Yeah. So when the when the bridge was first built, I was like, eh, "Looks like a finger trap." Yeah. Um, there were a lot of people out of work who, you know, say that you know they should have used more um, local people, local and... people to to design stuff like that and whatever. But that yeah, doesn't but... mean that if you want to be a world class city, you need to bring world class. Right. And, Artists, right? And, and maybe it's nobody here, there anymore. could have designed it. And there was here. there's another bridge like mm-hmm. 300 meters there's away. There's bridges everywhere. There's here. bridges everywhere. I use it all the time. Yeah. But that's just me. And it is a very cool looking bridge. Well, you know what I like the most about it? Is that the bike lane goes down the middle of it and pedestrians are on either side. Oh. And that to me works because the bike path system is a... I mean, we have the largest bike path system, I think, in North America. Mm-hmm. And you're always at risk of getting murdered by a bicyclist yeah. as you're walking down the bike path. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, to have, you know, they got their own lane. That's cool. I feel safe on the Peace Bridge. The funny thing is, too, is it is the um, one of the probably the most photographed parts of Calgary now is right that now, bridge. Because yeah. it looks pretty. It looks pretty dope. You can make some really kick-ass photos with that oh, yeah, with I, that bridge. What I'm now that we've gone through that though, I'm looking for the next level of photography of that bridge because they've always done like the they've got the undershot, they've got the undershot with the moon lighting, they've got you know like so I'm I can't wait for whoever comes up with the next cool thing, the next cool angle. I remember yeah. I saw one photographer in the last, me. I saw one in the last couple of weeks that was I was like oh that's cool, huh. but. Lord help me, it's somewhere on Instagram. I don't know. Could have been Calgary Views or YYC Influencer or something on Instagram, but it was it was a pretty cool shot. Every time I walk across that bridge, I'm reminded of uh, when I get to the Princess Island side, uh, myself and a friend, Robert Church, who will tag in here, did a Bow River cleanup in scuba gear, <laughs> and we nearly died. <laughs> And why did you nearly die, Michael? Because you shouldn't scuba dive the Bow River unless you're a rescue diver. Oh. But we did it anyways, and we we're going to you know, clean up the river. And the river is really freaking fast. Like, I don't think that people realize how crazy fast it is. It doesn't look fast. It doesn't look fast, but it's like, uh, yeah, it'll murder you. So, like, we had these great ideas of, you know... <laughs> doing our civic duty and doing it differently. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we dove in there and I think at the end of it, both of us, you know, really felt lucky to be alive as we lugged our, you know, hundred pounds of dive equipment back to where we started, you know, a kilometer down the way. Kilometer. 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 Yeah. So here you go. News now uh-huh. dot. Oh, newsweek.com. Dead 95-year-old wakes up during funeral rites. <laughs> really? And you know what I find interesting? That's fantastic. So, uh, Where? Uh, uh, like A dead 95-year-old Indian man has reportedly woken up during preparations for his funeral. Budram Gujar of 
Bakhtanwaland Ki Dani in Rajasthan, India, shivered and began to breathe when his family members poured water on his chest during a traditional pre-funeral ritual on November 3rd. Wow, so he was just meditating. Like, super hard, I guess. Yeah. It's funny because I, the timing is weird, so this this makes it spooky. Okay. I've been listening to the Lore podcast, oh, as we've we talked right. before. Yeah. No, like yesterday, uh-huh. I listened to the podcast about being buried alive and through the through the centuries people have um you know tied bells to to dead oh. people to see if they would that's where the term dead ringer comes from exactly yeah. um bells and strings and pulleys and in germany they made dead houses so if somebody died and you weren't sure if they were totally dead <laughs> i'm not dead yet <laughs> you will be soon um you you get a house for the people working there, and so they would watch these people decompose just in case they weren't actually dead. The ones that didn't decompose were probably still alive. Holy shit. Yeah. So it's just funny that this is like, uh, it's, it's like, just right here. Oh. Well, good on you, 95-year-old Indian chap. He told family members he had fallen asleep after experienced chest pains. <laughs> And this isn't the first time this has happened. System rebooted. A man being stored at a morgue in March was actually alive. According to News 18, a pathologist noticed a pulse moments before cutting into his body to perform a post-mortem examination. Ooh. The man, who was still brain dead, was sent later to a hospital with more appropriate facilities. Fuck. In June, a dead woman in South Africa was rescued from a morgue fridge when a worker noticed she was still breathing. Uh-huh. life will find a way that was a jurassic park reference i know and i was ignoring it um so you think with technology this day and age Mm -hmm. would like put a mirror up to their face if they're still breathing it's crazy i don't know yeah but apparently it happens it happens more often than you think it does right and so it apparently happens so much that uh, uh, us as a race and so terrifying to imagine being put into a box and then buried Ugh. that they put a bell in there so that you can like let the grave digger know that you're down there. Yeah. That, that, that's a thing. Like it's an actual thing. It's not hyperbole. It's not, you know. Yeah. No, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. Um, one gentleman, according to the lore podcast, which I can't remember at the moment, uh, <laughs> actually made a, a contraption in a coffin where he actually also had a feeding tube that you could put water and food down there. He lasted under, he to test it, he was down underground for an hour. But, I mean, I'm assuming back in the 19th century, 18th century, uh, people fell into comas all the time. Yeah. But if you didn't wake up after a couple hours, they would assume you were dead? I don't, I don't know. I would assume they check pulses and stuff. But yeah, but. What do I know? If it's super shallow? I mean, super sh- Right? You don't know. Uh, I would not want to be buried alive. Who's uh, Who Who does the lore podcast? Aaron Menke. Aaron Menke. Yep. yep. And I just want to give a little shout out to lore and Aaron Menke that Panda is like nonstop loring. Yeah. Like it's... it's I started late. Uh, well, you got a lot of loring to do. Uh, not as me- <laughs> So here's an embarrassing... <laughs> thing uh i'm on episode 79 or something like that did you start at one yes oh my god i know and how long have you been listening like a week more than a week (laughs) not that much longer than a week uh we we mentioned it we've mentioned on our podcast before but uh uh not long enough ago that it's embarrassing Mm. long enough that you're like well you know if you Listen to it while you're doing laundry and cleaning the house and, you know, waiting in line for something yeah, and waiting yeah. for the bus. And, you know, it, it adds up because these episodes are anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes long on average. Oh, there that's, is one that's, that's 45. The one about being buried alive. Oh. But uh, it's, it's it's interesting, too. So it, it's a folklore podcast that also... <laughs> takes a lot of history out of it so it's not ghost stories these are all stories that are based in real life uh some of them are actually uh he talks about like a serial killer from like the 1730s or something like some of it's actually like legit real uh and then others talk about you know uh, a guy in real life swearing 
that he saw some trolls on his plane when he was flying his B-52 bomber across Europe or something, right? So oh. it's 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 an interesting twist that it's sort of real, maybe. Well, and didn't you... So what was I watching the other day? And you're just like, oh, I just... Like, that showed up in the Lore podcast. I was... Uh, was it Sabrina? Oh. Or was it... What was it? Well... So Lore Podcast mentions a few things that have come up in American Horror Story. Right. I've noticed Well, we talked about that before. Um, one of the insane asylums. Oh, that's the one you were talking about. That uh, had horrible lobotomies and uh, people dying and a doctor that was insane and took people out into the woods. Uh, the Brotherhood, is it the Brotherhood of Steel? Their oh yeah main... because we were talking about yeah yeah so the Brotherhood of Steel their main hideout in ravaged post nuclear apocalypse America yeah is that a sane asylum crazy really neat yeah and I texted it to you but I'm on the spot right now so I can't tell you what it is no it's fine we could uh, edit it though well but we won't uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on. Uh, a, a breaking story. Ooh. Canada is running out of marijuana. I thought they already were last week and the week before. <laughs> Apparently they didn't it doesn't grow as fast as they thought it did. Now <laughs> Apparently how we, have a, have we have we have we have an appetite for marijuana. It's the newfies, I swear. Mm. Man, maybe. I don't know. Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of weed smokers out there so they run out of other medications uh i shouldn't say fairly often but i know that i've gotten notices from pharmacies saying you know this drug is back ordered can you prescribe something for this patient that'll take right. place of what they're on yeah but how long has this been legal a month well it's been legal well before that because of the medical marijuana use super uh, legal super legal like a wide open yeah a month right <clears throat> a month like yeah almost coming up in a month and here's the thing in kensington because i was i was like beside myself that there's like 10 pot shops in kensington none of them are open yet because they don't have any fucking weed well they, but or they haven't done their inspections or whatever they're closed the 420 on memorial and 10th closed it hasn't opened yet uh, uh, whatever that can, can uh, cannabis, whatever closed, uh, Greenleaf closed, like all these places. Um, Greenleaf just sounds like a tea shop. Yeah. True. Um, but really good tea. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. And it's weird. It's just, there's no, the shops are not open, but apparently co-op is pulling in 15 grand a day in Calgary at their, uh, co-op cannabis shop. There's a co-op, like the place you get groceries. <laughs> yeah. There's a, what? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. What? Yeah. Shut the front door. No, I will not. Well, I did and I locked it, but no, that's yeah. Co-op cannabis is 15 grand a day. Is What do they know that the little guys don't? Well, small business versus big man business. Right. Cause there's no small businesses that I know of that are open selling now. But co-op has got it. And I think that co-op probably locked it for probably three months to get a. Oh, man. That's my guess. I'm what? just I'm, I'm not a reporter. So do you think people are just going to go back to their illegal dealers or do they have pot? Or are they out, too? <laughs> I, you know, I have no idea. Weird. Yeah. Not surprised. <laughs> goes to show you the Canadian government doesn't know what the hell they're doing like at the best of times well yeah but it's they've not, got good intentions it's, but it's, it just it's not the government but I, I'm looking at these guys that like so it was Smoker's Corner is the canna cannabis or whatever it's called now and can you cannabis or can you not cannabis <laughs> no. uh, mm. I don't know where that came from yeah it's weird but you know they're a fairly big retailer yeah and you'd think that they'd be like one of the first ones. Like I, I, I thought honestly that all these shops on 10th street and in Kensington, were going to open their doors wide open on the 17th of last month. That would explain why I haven't noticed them. Yeah. Cause the one place that I thought there was going to be a cannabis shop, I don't think there is like on the corner of 10th, um, and Kensington, 
um, where the Killian used to be. Killian. Oh. Yeah. But maybe it just hasn't opened yet. Do you, do you, uh, like on the lower level there? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe it just hasn't opened yet because they just don't have any stuff. Well, they either don't have any wheat or they haven't got their permits approved or something. Like everybody's struggling. But, Crazy. But co op has figured it out. So I went to the drugstore today. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's so funny. So, on one hand, it's funny when people look like they're doing illegal stuff because you're like, you're so obvious it's dumb. They're just in the alleyway just before uh, the 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 drugstore yeah. by like a power generator or something like that. And they're talking and they're coughing and you're just like, and I know that you're not technically allowed to smoke pot like out <laughs> in the open. You have to smoke it basically at home because there yeah. aren't any designated areas. But I was like, is this like a meth deal? Like what's yeah. going on? They don't seem to care that I'm there, but they're still being secretive about it because they're hiding <laughs> It was the worst weed I had smelled in my <laughs> life. Because I walked by and Maybe I got it was a whiff. Meth weed. Maybe it was meth weed. I don't even know. But I swear to God, it stayed on me until I like went into the pharmacy. Oh I was like, God. this is disgusting. And this is why people don't want pot smokers to be just out on the street. Because cigarettes smell bad enough, right? Oh, yeah. The pot just, it, it was like two skunks <laughs> were rolled in a pile of cow manure and... And then hit by a car, and then they rolled into a ditch filled with dead possums. Wow. That's what it smelled like. And put in a McDonald's bag. Yes. <laughs> in Dale McDon- three Dale McDonald's, like, right along with it. It was, it you was could, bad. It, the smell was so bad, you could feel it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was oh. awful. It was so terrible. Yeah. I, I've, I, when I walked down... 10th street or Kensington road. I do notice the, the, uh, the odiferousness that is marijuana, but I ran into one that literally smelled like a skunk. I was pretty positive that a skunk actually lost its load. Yeah. But it was a guy. It was a guy just smoking. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's funny. Smoking. So when it became legal, I, I remember seeing a couple people post who, who live in the suburbs. They're like, my whole suburb smells like weed right now. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm like, I'm in Kensington where you think everybody's smoking weed. I'm like, I smell nothing. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we're all like law abiding citizens. <laughs> oh. Everybody in the suburbs is like, I can finally do it. Oh, God. Yeah, it's in funny. my house. You know, it'd be interesting. Mm. Um, I could never do it. And of course, don't drive while you're on it. So be very responsible. <laughs> we went to V Arcade the other day. Oh my God. Can you imagine smoking a bowl and then doing any of that? I might want to try that actually. But I think that I just, I'll confused. drive you and I'll just, you could oh, document you'll just the be experience. Useless. Oh my God. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. <gasps> Maybe that's like, you know, fodder for the next podcast. But yeah, VRK was, that's fucking, I, Quiver. So we, every time we go. Such a dumb game. We play Quiver. Yeah. But this time there's like a fucking sandworm. It's like uh, spices. Yeah. It's, you you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The movie. Yeah. Hmm. Or like Tremors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's totally a Tremors one. Yeah. Yeah. That game changes because so we, it's basically, uh, if anyone wants to know what this is uh you're just in various parts of uh, a mountain trying to stop the or- stop the orcs orc. and the flying orcs and the orc armies yeah. from getting into your castle yeah basically. breaking breaking your keep <laughs> and that's all it is you just throw arrows yeah you just you just shoot arrows the whole time and I, it's quite fun I, so i woke up this morning and my right trapezius was so stiff today yeah like we were there like two three days, days. No, two days ago. Two days ago. So yeah. So I was knocking and drawing these arrows for you know half an hour, and I woke up with like a repetitive stress injury. Oh, that's funny. Because <laughs> yeah. I I got tired holding one arm up. Yeah. So my left arm trapezius was a little sore, but yeah. it's fine now. And yeah. And no, my shoulder's good. It's just the the draw arm. So you took your eldest son yeah. uh, with us to V Arcade. We've done V Arcade before. Yeah. Uh, and we enjoyed enough that we're actually considering uh, Christmas presents to ourselves, buying our own Oculus or... Well, yeah, or uh, uh, Vive. Vive. Yeah, HTC Vive. And because I think that there's a, a Drop Bear and Panda ongoing uh, 
adventure in virtual reality. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That could be a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have the studio space downstairs for it. Oh, yeah, we do. That'll be interesting. I'm still looking for, I would like the big apparatus where you can still walk. You know, like the, it looks like a jolly jumper for yeah, like you gotta toddlers. Put on, you gotta but put on these shoes that have got like no grip whatsoever. It, it's like a you slide or yeah, something. Yeah. I, I would love one of those because then you can actually walk. Uh, most of the games you click and slide and click and slide, and it's it's yeah. very frustrating for me. But uh, your son seemed to really like it. Oh, it was fun. Yeah, we had a blast. Yeah, you guys beat the shit out of each other and. Uh, uh, we did Apollo. Apollo, yeah. And, and yeah, it, but I didn't like the movement mechanics of that either. Like, it, like there's there's stuff about VR that's just not quite there. Yeah. Like, the human body can move so much faster than the computer can render. Mm-hmm. Right. So you've got to like do this egg beater motion with your arms to move forward. Mm-hmm. But you can't reverse it to move back. What? Yeah. So How do you, you move back? Well, you have to like use one of your thumb buttons to turn around, turn and, around then go and, forward. and then go forward again. Yeah. So it's really, it, it's, it's counterintuitive. Yeah. And, you know, I was like throwing out my jabs and having my hand up there to block, but it, it was ineffective. Still slightly slower. It's not like punching somebody in the face. Well, uh, this way you can at least legally punch yeah keegan in the face it just wasn't i don't know I, wasn't I as fun that, as you thought I, yeah i was hoping that'd be a, lo- a little more fun no i find the movement with uh with like the um flying games a lot easier because then yeah. you just have one arm that's a boost and, yeah, and the you other one just anywhere exactly. you want yeah those are great like the first that. time i did a flying game i freaked out a little <laughs> bit just in my brain because you're like oh my god oh 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 wow i'm flying yeah it's very very cool <clears throat> it's like um Ricky's Plank Experience. So that that one game that we did, I think we talked about it on, on another podcast, where you walk out on the plank, you're like 87 stories up. But you've got the firefighter mode where you can like fly around the city putting out fires. Mm-hmm. And you can have like two like super, uh, my arms are up in the air right now because I'm flying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or you can go behind your back and have like a fire hose. Yeah. And, you know, I love that shit. I still like the game that um, I didn't get to play this time, but uh, you and oh, Keegan Skyfront. did it. Skyfront. Skyfront oh. was a lot of fun. But if you have somebody who comes into your game who's a super expert, it's not fun. Right, yeah. We'll just kill you all over the place. Yeah, so we, we were in there because the, the, I didn't know how to do a closed server on it. Oh, whatever. This is why this, we need our own. This guy comes in and... Oh my God. Like he destroyed us. Like, like this isn't fun. Yeah. And I was, and I was, you know, giving Keegan a chance, like when it was just me and him, you know, he's flying and I was like still shooting him in the face. Yeah. But I'd like let him fly for a while. Then I kill him. Yeah. And I'd be like, ha ha ha. Oh, going through the zigzag through the hallways yeah. too while you're flying is. Uh, but then this weird. guy shows up. He's fucking Spider-Man on crack. Yeah. Like, holy crap. Yeah, not so much fun. There was a, a World War II game there where, um, yeah. it wasn't like Call of Duty, but it was... Well, it's very kill. similar, though. Like, but, first person shooter. Yeah, and, yeah. You, know, you get trench warfare, and yeah. you got, like, the grenades. And, and then I played some sort of music thing where I sliced with lightsabers, uh, mm. certain colors of, of squares, <laughs> depending on where they came and how you could... And it was just, it was just for me, right? But so uh, it's we a bit were, of a workout, too, which is great. We were all connected Oh yeah, and and so we were. All you heard was red, 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 blue, red, 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 blue, red, 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 red. I needed to do that for my brain. <laughs> and Keegan and I were just like, "Hey Jen, like, what are you playing?" You're like red, red, blue, red. <laughs> but it so the so, music was, was so loud. It was so cute. And I should have gone to the options and turned the music down, right? But yeah, I because I didn't actually realize that I was speaking out loud. Yeah. Or that anyone could hear me. I can't, I don't quite know what I was thinking, but it but helped me. I, I, hey man, I, be, I believe in it. I think I probably do the same thing. I need that art program. Uh, tilt brush. Tilt brush. And uh, I need to just fly around a lot and get some exercise. Cool. So let's destroy some freaking orcs and go into Skyrim or something. Yeah. January 2019, Dropper and Panda, virtual reality. Because this reality sucks. <laughs> no. It does, kind of. Uh, no, don't, no. Reality's fucking awesome. It, well, yeah, I just, 
Uh, Don't get all dark on me. Goth panda. Goth, goth panda. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. That's cool. It's 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 okay. You don't have to God play alone. Panda anywhere else. You've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2 for a while. I have. Not I, as much as some people on the internet, that's for sure. Oh but. my goodness. Uh, yeah, it, it's good. It's okay. It's not your kind of thing, eh? I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's okay. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm missing with video games. I, I feel like I'm missing something. Virtual reality is what you're missing. Maybe. But there's, I, I do like it. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh-huh. It is fucking gorgeous. Apparently you can kill people from the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, I like that idea. I know. There's all sorts of side quests that are fucking weird and cool. Yeah. So I, so I like it. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm not a super invested gamer. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, it's not like I can, like, I go for four hours and I'm, I'm spent. You're like a battlefield guy where you... Go and snipe people. And right. I, I like to crawl through the grass. I'll like take an hour getting to a place and I'll set things up and I'll zero my scope and I get like one shot, one kill, then I'm out. So weird. Or I like flying helicopters. Which doesn't seem that very interesting in a game. <sighs> Love it. You've played, uh, not Sky Fox, but uh, Sky- Valkyrie. Oh, or Valkyrie, something. yeah. And I watch you play it and I'm like, this looks really dull. Oh, I love flying games. I'm not a gamer, to be fair, so. Yeah, I love I love flying games. I think flying games are the boss. Weird. Yeah. To me, I find they're dull. What we should do is when we get our VR game console, whichever one that is, or both, <gasps> uh, we'll do a lot more research, like uh-huh. we did a few months ago, and uh, we'll figure out what we should get, because sometimes it's just, you just, call, you know, dial up Steam and just book. Well, <sighs> Team Fortress 2. I don't know what that means. That is my favorite video game of all time. Is that like something dumb from the 80s? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. No. Oh, you're going to get. <laughs> my favorite game is Pong. You're, you're going to get hate mail. Team Fortress 2. That is like, so, because you play cooperatively on the shared server. Ooh, and, that sounds like a lot of and you swearing. And you get to choose. Well, it can be. But if you get in with a good group, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I love that game. That was what like, do you do? Uh, well, it's like capture the flag. So you basically protect a base and, um, or, or you try and like capture the other person's base cooperatively. It's super cool. Like, I really like that game. That was like one of my favorite. I was like the spy. I'd be like all ninja shit. And I, yeah, I have no idea what this game is. Oh. We should look at it after we're done. Yeah. Oh, I, you will love it. We, we watch, sometimes I get into these neebs. Gaming. Oh, I love uh, games. What, was a, what did you just turn me on to? Uh, humans Fall Flat. Oh my God. But I'll, I'll stop watching <laughs> Neebs for a while because yeah. I like watching, I like watching Drop Air play like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Fallout. Yeah. I, I'm not good at it. Yeah. Uh, uh, playing the games or like I'll watch him play Bioshock or. Uh, and you're Call such a great co pilot. I too. help out and oh, I yeah. look things up and I try to solve puzzles with you and whatever. Yeah. So. Every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, you know, Neebs Gaming did Fallout, so I'm going to watch all 12 episodes of them <laughs> yeah. playing through it. And sometimes uh, Subnautica was great oh, because Subnautica they actually took amazing. on the roles of the people yeah. in the game. So <laughs> it, that was outstanding. They Neebs, did an amazing Neebs on job. the other planet. Uh, do you ever try this? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? 002FU. <laughs> but, and then I'll stop watching it for because I'm like, oh, none of these videos... Yeah. interest me and then like last Friday or something <laughs> that I was bored and I was like uh, and I ended up watching like 12 episodes in a row of what random games and this Humans Fall Flat came on yeah. and I was like oh my god I have to show Drop Bear this it's these jelly jelly people <laughs> And the whole goal is to just get from one side of the map, map to, to the, the other, other. Yeah. but you have to figure out how to do it so it's a puzzle game Yeah, it is so funny it is and to watch Neebs the Neebs guys do it like Absro and Simon. I love the first one. They're like, Simon's going to hate this. <laughs> it is so funny. They I, do such a good job. I love Neebs. I love I, I channel like, so much. I like Neebs uh, nipples. 
And his, and his little That's going to be the quote of the little, podcast. his little food hole. Neeb's nipples. And we're going to tag Neeb's on this, too. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. And then there's, like, the, the, the gang wars where they're all trying to, like, fight each other and kill each oh other off. And, and I, but they're all rubbery, so they can't, their arms don't really work. And it seems to me that probably the, the controls are... I don't know how the controls work. Probably the more you press something, but the they, more you can But they move. don't seem to know how to work the characters. Oh, Do you know God. what I mean? Like, it's just awkward. So funny. Yeah. I never thought that a game that looked that <laughs> stupid would be so much fun I to know. watch. I've, every time you put it on, like, I just laugh my fucking head off. I don't think it's on PlayStation, though. And we have a PlayStation. I want to uh, say it's Xbox and... Maybe I get an Xbox. And uh, Steam. Is that Microsoft? See, that's the problem with... <sighs> Video games is like, oh, I want to play this game, but it's yeah. now I have six consoles to play all the games I want. It's right. it's kind of silly. Yep. So how are you going to save the world this week, do you think? I mostly going to just save myself. Oh, that's By good. taking that hundred dollars. Yes. And do something unsexy with it and possibly buy a new battery for my car. <laughs> <laughs> Wah, wah. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a... Not buying drugs with it. I'm not doing a party. Yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, take us out for a fancy dinner. That's a responsible thing. Yeah. Battery for the car. Ugh. Yeah. Well, it is like a 13-year-old car, so... Oh, yeah. It needs a new battery. Yeah. 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 And your headlights look like they've gone through like 88 miles per hour. Like, it looks like they've time-traveled. They've traveled. been through the war. They have. Or three. Yeah. I don't get that. I don't know why they're burnt out. Yeah. I, the, I, the lights work. I think it's a Matrix thing. I think it's it's probably like had a recall that you missed. Oh, but when I take my car in, nobody's like, hey. Let me look, look at those the... burnt headlights. Because the head, so the, the lights have seen actually. Anything like it. I know. We even, <laughs> we even tagged Toyota on an Instagram picture once of like, because like half my, half my lights are blackened out. <laughs> right. The headlights work. But the plastic covering is burnt out, and I'm going to go up in flames one of these it's, days. Well, it's, or it could be time travel. Oh. Maybe. Well, I haven't visited myself, so I must not be yeah, very but interesting. but maybe your car's doing it. Or maybe somebody's taking your car time traveling, and you don't know. Newton. <gasps> it is Newton. What? Can you imagine him in, like, little time traveler goggles? Oh, my God. That would be amazing. And a scarf. I don't know how he could touch the the pedals and well, the... he, does, he just does it with his mind. Oh shit! He is a cat. Yeah, he's got his like helmet on. He's got like jack boots. <sighs> how are you going to save the world this week? <laughs> oh, such a good question. I am going to um, pay my taxes. We are both very boring right now. We're adults. It's terrible. <laughs> You used to be like, 100 bucks, go to the warehouse, go to the Republic, <laughs> like go dance and drink until I fall over. And I want to change that. I'm going to work on my comedy set because I got a, I got a gig coming up on the 25th. Oh, that's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. With uh, Barry Piercy. Yeah. Barry Piercy is going to be like the featured dude. Yeah. And it's going to be handcuffed comedy uh-huh. uh, here in Calgary at Juliet's Castle. Yep. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to like, I'm going to find some fucking humor. I'm going to do something new. I think that is against everything that people have told you to do. I know. I'm uh, bad that way. I'm a bad comic. I could see how you would want to change it up if you're in the same bar all the time. Well, that's the thing. I, like, this is my my proving grounds are this bar. Like, uh, I've only ever done stand up there. But your story is so good. I know, but I need to make it better. I need to hone it. But well, you're I'm, not going to hone it if you do something new. See, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Miss never been a comedian before in her life. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on stuff. I've, I've got, so, you know, like last time I did the same story, but I added a thing to it. You did. So this time I'll probably end up with the same story, but I'm going to shorten it and add a new thing to it. I don't know what you mean, but I will find <laughs> out. And Yeah. Yeah, come check it out. Could be terrible. Most likely will be, <laughs> but I support you anyway. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I am Panda. I'm Drop Air. In Drop Air and Panda. Season one. Episode 22. Drop Air and Panda. Save, save the, the world. world. And Newton. Time travel, Newton. Newton time travel so you don't have to. He's seen some shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm
Drop it, panda. <laughs>